We were young and strong. We were just running against the wind. But old Hillary isn't young and strong. She can feel the hellfire lapping her big old booty. Let's talk to Frederico in New York. I'm sorry, folks. I'm going to stop. Frederico, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. How are you doing today, my brother? I'm doing all right, <laughs> but just thinking about Hillary Clinton made me want to vomit. Sorry. That, yeah, me too. That's really gross. <laughs> Think about her and all her girlfriends. That's really disgusting. <laughs> Listen, uh, people don't... That's like Netanyahu to... playing golf with Hitler. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> a lot of people don't look at their surroundings. I do a lot of work for uh, post offices and subway restaurants and stuff like that. Uh, people do not realize the amount of postal police cars that are around them. People just know of uh, regular police, but there is a lot of activity of postal police in Brooklyn, in Queens, the Bronx. No, no, I agree. We actually got contacted by the post office, and uh kid who wrote the article that was on Drudge said he's updating it, uh, but they, they countered us that they're expanding their police force that's why they're buying ammo. That's the point. They're, all these groups are expanding their police forces, buying billions of rounds of ammo. Go ahead. Yes, and another thing, uh, you guys have to understand another thing. Uh, according to them, there is people stealing packages and stuff from the postal service. Their employees, they are using their own employees, but they are putting some tracking devices in a lot of people's packages to monitor where these practices come from, they go and come back. But the thing is, is these postal police actually are not doing any raids or nothing. They are just authoritarian thugs that they carry in a gun. And they're they're very bad. They're, like, very crazy around here. You know, they cannot pull you over and do anything, but they do carry guns. And, you know, they, they I don't know why they patrol the city. They don't have any, any anything to do around here. But people don't see this. They don't, they don't realize well, every agency is expanding or trying to get armed law enforcement. It's like bling or something. Uh, and uh, it's it's just a sign of our, of the authoritarian third world slide. Great points. Good to hear from you, Federico. This has been out for like 30 minutes. I didn't even plug it during the main show. TSA agents interrogate Jewish author for reading conservative newspaper. Federal goons assume role of political thought police. Hey, Watson, hold on one second. This is incredible because it's like that uh, chief of police was flying to the Constitution uh, meeting, and they had that data and interrogated him. Watson, you're absolutely, I'm on air right now, you're absolutely right that they're doing this. This is their new threat fusion center deal where they, quote, check you out before you get there. So hopefully you'll add that point about the police chief. This is getting really creepy, man. But she was reading a mainline Jewish newspaper and so they, I mean, that's like in England where they were reading the Daily Mail or something. And remember, they questioned people uh, like in downtown London. Well, why are you reading that newspaper? I mean, this is really, this is secret police. What are you reading there? I mean, this is outrageous, Watson. Well, they also let a woman pass with full face dress without checking her identity, the muzzling, at the exact same time. No questions asked. Well, this is just getting amazing, Watson. Uh, I mean, we were living in the twilight zone here. This should be a huge national story. I mean, this is just it's kidding. Drudge. Our story is? Yeah. Oh, cool. DrudgeReport.com? I love the DrudgeReport.com. Where is it on there? Uh, middle right-hand column somewhere. Middle right-hand column. TSA interrogates Jewish author for reading conservative newspaper. That's pretty pathetic when Drudge already knows about stuff on my site before I do. <laughs> you guys, you, I have a great crew. But you got to stay on top of the breaking InfoWars stories. I mean, you're giving me all these other stories around the world, and that's great. We got to watch our site. Great job, the crew. I'm not complaining. I'm complaining about myself. I got the site right here in front of me. Let's see what else broke on InfoWars.com. How's my favorite little red coat doing? <laughs> not too bad. Perfect timing. Oh, here's that article. Cruise and. Oh, you're eating. Paul has a joke. Always call me. Huh? I'm just finished. You should have found 10 minutes earlier. What did you have to eat? Uh, chicken and rice and egg. Ah, red cut meal. Look at this. Cruz and Paul turn up the heat on Democratic establishment. That's a really good article getting into all the stuff with Clinton. Hey, uh, we haven't talked about how I'm speaking uh, the tw is it the 12th of March at Oxford to the main faculty in the main Oxford Hall. That's pretty trendy, huh? Pretty trendy, yes. Members only, though. Very uh, exclusive. It's members only? Well, I'm allowed to film it, so. Yeah. We'll get it out to people.
All right, Watson, I'll see you later. I'll call you after the show. All right, take care. Any, any other news? No, that's pretty much it. One with the Jay Leno thing is pretty big. Yeah, you, you know, I'm, I should call you after the show. I should give you all the stuff I know about Leno now that that happened. I don't know, though. In those emails and phone calls, did they tell you guys it was off record? I remember reading them. It didn't say it was off record. That is kind of newsworthy that the brass wouldn't let me on there and Jay wanted me. It doesn't even matter. All right, Watson, good job. I'll see you. All right, see you. See you. We just, like, I'm sorry. I'm out of time. I'm sorry. Uh, symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty.